And the other ones that I have all center around references. So specifically many to many references. Uh, I've, there's a lot of discussion inside the community about how can I do many to many um, and the general consensus out there, right? The, and even the advice that I've always given everybody is, well, you just do like an in statement where you say, select for me the opposing records where this ID is in the list that I've got on that record that says these are the other tables things. Follow what I mean? Cause we're many to many. Um, like, so that's what I was always giving people the advice to do. The problem that I found with that, like I, as I, I started doing, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna make a sample app and start, like I found a few holes and I was like, oh wow, I had no idea these holes were there, holy crap. Um, the problem that you can run into there is that, all right, so the idea with many to many is that I've got two tables and then on each table, I've got like in the record, I have a field for both of them that is a list of the records on the opposing table that the thing belongs to, right? Um, so what happens when I add something to this, I have to push it into this one. You follow what I mean? So like, I just can't say, cool, give me the ones that are in the, the other list. I've got to like push. So if, if I'm talking about like, if I add something to the list, I've got to push that into the list on the other side. Like the item that I added, I need to add this item into the list over there. You follow what I mean? Like there's little holes like this that I was just like, whoa, 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 we need to fix these. So I have put out a couple of sample apps that will allow you guys to um, peruse how to do these little, fi fix the holes. I should mention the, uh, like the way that I'm building stuff is generally like, I, I need things to update right now. You know what I mean? Like, um, some things I can run through automation. Uh, the problem with automation is that it's run on the server. So like I have to submit the request, I have to submit the record, then wait for it to, and then like it comes back and then I get the answer. So I can, like sometimes that sort of delay in getting the response back doesn't work. Like you can't do that. So I generally approach all of my problems from the standpoint first of how can I solve it client side? How can I create some sort of system in the app that would allow me to immediately change that data so that the person using the app like pushes the button and they see the thing change. Do you know what I mean? Cause like, if you use automation, it's like, I push the button. Oh, hey, look, there's the thing. Oh, cool, awesome. Now it did the thing. Like I can't do that. I need it to be like that. So with that sort of approach, if you need that update on the other side like that, you've got to force that to happen. Okay, so I've got two apps that I put out about how to handle um, many to many situations. Let me get both of them open. I have one for brute force because I know a lot of people like the simple one and done. Um, and so the brute force way is the one that we're using select, right? Uh, this one works, but it's yeah, inefficient, it's quick and dirty, it works but it's not my favorite method of doing this. The, but the specific things that you've got to make sure that you pay, pay attention to when you're doing the brute force method, like if I, if I go and I show you, let me go here. If I go and I show you the, let's say the employees. Oh yeah, so the scenario, sorry, just high level, right? Many to many, I have employees and projects. Cool, on the employees, what projects are they a part of? On the, on the projects, what employees are a part of this project? Fair enough. Uh, that's what we're going for here. So if I go here, you can see I've got an enum list that is the assigned projects here. And this is on the employee side. And then correspondingly on the projects, I have the assigned employees, which is an enum, enum list. So they work both ways. Um, so if we just focus on one of these guys, just focus on the uh, this employee side. You may notice there's a couple other columns that I've added inside here. These were the things that like, when I found that there was a bunch of holes, when I started uh, implementing this many to many using a select statement, I was like, holy crap, whoa, 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 what is going on? Okay, the hole that I found is like, okay, how can you tell the system like when do this order of operation step-by-step step slow, right? So I'm on the employee and I'm, and I add a project 
and I remove some projects from that employee. Okay, how does the, and then like I save it, how does the system know how to do what it needs to do with the two different things that you just did? Do you follow what I mean? Like I need to do a different thing with the things that you've added to the list than the th thing that I need to do with the things that you've removed from the list. Like I need to do different actions with those specifically if we're talking like, you know, action wise. Like, okay, so I need to know what did you add and what did you remove? So that's what I did over here on these columns over here. Um, in each of these tables, they have, there's the main enum list that holds, this is what this person is assigned, right? And if I just go into the settings for it really quick, you can see it's a, it's an enum list with a base type reference to the project table with a validity of give me all of the projects and order them by state and then by address. So it's just a master list of everything. That gives you the ability to go in, if I show you over here, it gives you the ability to say go into uh, Andros here and I can come inside and I've got this list of projects. So now I can select something to add to the list, but this is what I'm talking about. Like, okay, what if I come into this screen, like hit like this and I say, okay, we're done with those two, but we're moving to Florida. Okay. So when I save this record, the system has to remove the employee from the two that I removed and then add the employee to all of the ones that I clicked to add. The columns that I do then is over here inside the table, right? I have one that holds what was removed, one that holds what was added. Uh, and if I show you the formulas for these, the one that was removed, okay, so all you do is I do, uh, I look up, uh, you, you could probably get away with this row before I've been told that this works. A lot of times when I try that, it doesn't work. So I generally avoid it, but you probably get away with that. But the idea is if I look up the old value, right? So the old value that's stored inside the database, okay, that value over there hasn't changed. So I'm in the form, right? And maybe I changed the value there, but I haven't saved anything yet. So that value that's still back there in the database is still the original value. So if I look that value up, I can get, well, what was it originally before you changed it? So that's kind of like the original method for the, this row before, um, you might be able to just do this row before I'll play with it. And like, I'm going to test that robustly and see if I can break it and to see where that breaks. And I'll let you all know, but this is the idea is that you just go to um, you, you look up this previous value and you say, um, what are the, uh, assigned projects, right? I split that into a, in a list because you have to do that. And then I subtract from it. What are the, what is the current value? So take the old minus the new, and that gets me anything that you've removed. And then for the added ones, it's just the other way around. I take the new list and I subtract the old one. And that gets me anything that you've added to the list. So now that I've got both of those individual lists separated like that, now it's really easy for me to say, cool, for that one list, add them to stuff. For that other list, remove them from stuff. And now it's just a matter of implementing the actions in the background for like when I save the employee record, it needs to go and do all of the stuff. Um, and that you can find all inside this app sheet app, peruse it to your heart's content. Uh, if you have any questions about it, you know, I can always dive in more, but I'm going to move on. Um, we're already about halfway through the other